Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Last weekend, my sister and I walked into a local coffee shop and greeted the employees and patrons with a good morning. A regular patron of the shop remarked, boy, you two sure are chipper today. To which we replied, not just today, every day. And he said, you're not happy every day. No one is. To which I replied, actually, we are. There is something to be happy about every day. The gentleman stopped and went on his way. That's not to say that I'm never in a bad mood. Of course I am. In fact, that day was a particularly difficult day for me. It got me to thinking, why are some people able to stay positive in the face of adversity, while others seem to get stuck in a, a rut of negativity? And wouldn't it be wonderful if we could all achieve a greater level of happiness? But before we can be happy, we need to know what happiness is. Merriam-Webster defines happiness as a state of well-being or contentment. So how do we achieve that? Many people search for happiness not within themselves, but in other people and material things. They seek out things that they believe will deliver it. A good college, a luxury sports car, a vacation home, a bigger paycheck. When we're not happy with what we have, we believe we'll be happier when we get what we want. And that's true. We will be happy, but only temporarily. The problem is, is that once you get the mansion or the swimming pool, or get the promotion you've been chasing, you gradually get used to it. Conversely, even when we experience a negative event, our immediate dissatisfaction also fades. And in time, we return to our pre-existing state of happiness, or unhappiness, whichever the case may be. In fact, in 1978, researchers at Northwestern University and the University of Massachusetts proved just that. They gathered two groups of people, lottery winners and recent victims of catastrophic events, who are now quadriplegics and paraplegics. The researchers asked each group to rate the amount of pleasure they got from everyday activities, like hanging out with friends, watching TV, laughing at jokes, or receiving a compliment. As predicted, the lottery winners were no happier, nor did they experience as much pleasure with mundane events. The initial change from the status quo produced short-term happiness or unhappiness, but as that becomes the day-to-day -day norm, happiness seems to level out. Here's another more pertinent example. Mr. Will led the, New England, the hockey team to the New England Championships three years in a row. After each win, he was thrilled. This winter, however, the team lost in the quarterfinals. Understandably, Mr. Will was extremely disappointed initially, but that event's impact was short-lived. Mr. Will has gone back to his baseline level of happiness because for him, <clears throat> winning a championship or even multiple championships is not the key to lasting happiness. So what is the key to lasting happiness? To find the answer, we must look within ourselves. <clears throat> happiness is a state of internal fulfillment. Happiness is not the result of a championship win, an A on a test, or a fancy car. Happiness is something we choose. It is not a destination, but a way to live our lives. Happiness can be learned and cultivated, and it is entirely within our reach. A famous Tibetan proverb reads, <clears throat> Seeking happiness outside ourselves is like waiting for sunshine in a cave facing north. So here are 10 tips toward a life of contentment and fulfillment, steps that will prove to have enduring, long-lasting effects on your level of happiness. Number one, be thankful. When you appreciate what you have, what you have appreciates in value. <coughs> so basically, being grateful for the goodness that is already evident in your life will bring you a deeper sense of happiness. And that's without having to go out and buy something. Look around you. You're surrounded by people who love you and care about you. You've been given a wonderful opportunity here at Salisbury School. You get to wear shorts. Be thankful for these things. Number two, don't compare yourself to the guy next to you. Comparing yourself to someone else can be poisonous. If you're somehow better than that person, it gives you an unhealthy sense of superiority. If you're worse than that person you're comparing yourself to, you discredit the hard work that you've done and dismiss all the progress that you've made. Work on the relationships around you. The happiest people on the planet are the ones who have deep, meaningful relationships. So connect with your brothers here on the hilltop and keep in touch with loved ones at home. Number four, learn how to deal. Bad stuff is going to happen. It's inevitable. But how you respond to those moments is what shapes your character. No one has it easy all the time, but happy people know how to confront disappointments 
while acknowledging their blessings and being thankful for them. Even in the face of despair, people can still find strength to remain positive. Number five, learn to forgive. Harboring feelings of hatred is horrible for your well-being. When you hate someone, you're continuously thinking about it, and those negative emotions take over and are toxic. Number six, be mindful and present. Don't rush, unless you're late to class, of course. Deep happiness cannot exist without slowing down to enjoy the joy. When we neglect to appreciate the moment, we rob it of its magic. It's the simple things in life that can be most rewarding if we remember to fully experience it. Number seven, pursue your passion. Confucius said, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. Being wholeheartedly dedicated to doing something that you love is much more rewarding than doing something for material gain. Number eight, practice spirituality. Studies demonstrate a link between spiritual engagement and happiness. When we practice spirituality or religion, we recognize that life is bigger than us. We surrender the idea that we are the center of the universe. It enables us to connect to the source of all creation and embrace the connectedness with everything that exists. So when you're sitting in this beautiful chapel every Tuesday and Friday, embrace the opportunity to reflect and be thankful. Number nine, laugh whenever you can. Laughter is always linked to happy people. Happy people have a sense of humor and know when to have a good laugh. Happy people know when to laugh themselves, too. In fact, I get more of a kick out of people teasing me than I do teasing someone else. And finally, as Reverend Tall says, make haste to be kind. Volunteer at a soup kitchen. Send your mother flowers. Performing an act of kindness releases serotonin, a feel-good chemical in your brain. Selflessly helping someone is a super powerful way to feel good inside. What's even better is that not only will you feel better, but the people around you will feel better as well. It's infectious. So there you have it, a recipe for happiness of sorts. No new flashy sports car, no championship ring, just simple, scientifically grounded wisdom for long-term happiness. These are all things that we can start implementing today, and I hope that we can all start making positive changes towards lives of happiness and fulfillment.